second developer preview of Android Q has just rolled out for Pixel phones through the Android beta program, so let's take a quick look at what's new in this release. The most significant new feature in QBeta 2 is notification bubbles. These are basically Google's take on the chat heads feature you might know from Facebook Messenger. In the current build, they require a bit of command line magic to enable for messaging apps, but like chat heads, this gives you a floating cluster of, well, bubbles for each conversation that you have open. Right now it's pretty buggy, but it's easy to see how something like this at an OS level supporting all messaging apps could be pretty powerful. So it's a neat feature here, but still very early on. Android's gesture navigation has also been changed dramatically, and well, it's pretty rough right now. The system buttons look the same as before, but now swiping between apps works much more like it does on iOS. You can switch to different apps by swiping left or right across the entire width of the navigation bar. So the old way of quickly flicking between apps doesn't work, and you also can't use this new gesture from the home screen. I don't want to put too much emphasis on this because it's pretty obvious Google's playing around with different gesture options here, and there are bugs aplenty to be seen. This will almost certainly change before Q is finalised, but it at least shows that we can expect some evolution of gesture navigation in the next version of Android. Security is a big theme in Android Q as we saw in our first look video, and in QBeta 2 Google is continuing to crack down on apps' access to your local storage. The new scoped storage feature gives apps their own sandboxed internal storage, completely separate to what other apps can use. You'll still have the shared collection of downloads, music, etc. on your local storage which apps can access with your permission, plus Android will automatically strip out EXIF data which can contain location and other sensitive information when you're sharing photos between apps unless the app has the right location permission. This one's likely a bigger change for app developers than regular users, but again it's just part of the big security and privacy push in Android Q. Next up, notifications for music and podcast apps now have this handy progress bar, which you can use just as you'd expect. This is enabled by default in apps like Google Play Music and YouTube, but the visuals aren't quite perfect just yet. Speaking of notifications, just as Android Q Beta 1 brought the change that meant you could only dismiss notifications by swiping left, Beta 2 now lets you control the direction of that swipe to dismiss, so if you prefer it the other way around, you can switch it up. Unfortunately, there's no option to go back to a swipe in either direction though, like we had in Android Pie. There are of course a handful of very small visual tweaks here and there on top of the stuff we pointed out in our first Android Q hands-on videos. There's still four months to go before Google drops the final version of Q and we find out what that Q actually stands for, so as I always say, this stuff can and likely will change in the near future. Next off for Q is Google I.O. 2019 where we'll see the third beta release and likely more features and APIs for developers. Stick with us and subscribe so you don't miss more from the next version of Android. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.